that lovable lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. <laughs> Friends, and thank you, Wendell. Today, Wendell, we're going to tell a story about some men who wanted to make a speech at the women's club. A speech, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, uh, what's it like to have a man sweep you off your feet and win your heart with words, Mrs. Greenwood? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> so they tell me. <laughs> but it isn't Mrs. Greenwood. It's Miss Greenwood. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you're sorry. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards. To remind you that whenever you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say and the way you want to say it. So on birthdays, anniversaries, graduation, whenever you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Yes, and don't forget... A Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Now let's look in on Lakeview in the Barton home and see how Charlotte's getting along with the job of administering the affairs, guarding the finances, and patching up the troubles of the three Barton youngsters. Right now, it's late on a midweek afternoon, and here in the dining room, young Bobby is helping Charlotte set the table for dinner. Charlotte. Robert, I do appreciate your helping me, darling, but oh my, you're way off the beam with those forks. Yeah? Yes, they go on the left side, not the right. Why? Well, most people hold the fork with the left hand when they cut their meat. Yeah, but tonight we haven't got any meat to cut. All we got is vegetables. <laughs> You've got a point there. <laughs> I wish I could say the same for our ration books, then we'd have meat. <laughs> well, you'd better put the forks where they belong, Robert. It's best to follow tradition. What tradition? Oh, that's something that people do without having any reason, except that it's customary. <laughs> you know, like me having a finger for a wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. No, I don't either, but I never give up hope. <laughs> Robert, the spoons do not go in the middle, darling. That's so you can have your choice, Aunt Charlotte. Right hand if you want to stir your coffee. Left hand if you want to eat your succotash. <laughs> you better let me finish setting the table. <laughs> You're going to have a situation here that Emily Post couldn't unscramble. Mm -hmm. Aw, setting a table ain't a job for a man anyway. If i got to do anything, I want to do something important. Such as eating the food after the table is set? No, I mean... I wish I had some kind of a real job with a salary. Well, Barbara's working down at the library, and Jack's got himself a job with that real estate firm. Now, what kind of work would you like to do? Well, the kind of job I want is where I don't have to know anything. Uh-huh. You know, I can just sit around and tell other guys what to do. Watch it, son. You're wanting to be a sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Robert, I'll talk to Mr. Anderson about you delivering papers. Hmm? Somebody at the door, Aunt Charlotte. Oh, it's probably Judge Conan. Uh, greetings, Miss Greenwood. Well, Judge, come right in. I've been expecting uh, yes, you. Yes, yes, my secretary said you'd phone and wanted to see me. Uh, what is it, Miss Greenwood? Well, won't you come in first? Uh, sorry, I can't. I've uh, only got a minute. I've got a cab waiting. I'm on my way to the station to catch a train for Chicago. Very important business, very important. Oh, dear. I wanted you to make a speech at the women's club day after tomorrow. Me? Mm -hmm. Speech at the women's club? Mm -hmm. I have a very important project to present to the women's club. Yes. And I wanted a man to explain it. A man that a woman would respect and admire and look up to. So, uh, <laughs> you thought of me first, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, first I thought of Van Johnson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really worth postponing your trip for, Judge. You see, I want you to talk about the locators. What? Locators? Mm-hmm. It's a new organization that's very worthwhile. Look, I don't want to be curt, Miss Greenwood. I've got to go to Chicago. Isn't there somebody in the women's club who can talk? Judge, at a women's club, everybody can talk. The trouble is, the female of the speeches is more deadly than the male. <laughs> oh, well, that's very cute. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Judge. Now, oh, no, put no. off your trip, will you, and make the talk, won't you, please? Well, I... Oh, pretty please. Well, well, you're well, just the man to do it. You think so? Oh, you have such a command of language. Huh? Such a gift of oratory, and oh. shall I say, uh, 
silver tongue. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> then you will make the speech. Well, I... Well... No. But just... No, 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 no. Oh, my, you've got more nose than Jimmy Durante. <laughs> oh, dear me, look at the time. Look at the... Oh, I must be going. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Jeff Cronin. Oh, hello there, Jack. Goodbye, Miss Greenwood. I certainly hope you can find somebody to make that speech. But, Judge, who can I get? Now, what do you say? I say, who can I get? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Well, who can you get for what, Aunt Charlotte? Oh, it's just one of those things, Jack. Sometimes I get more things thrust upon me than a hall tree. I wonder if it's because I look like one. <laughs> oh, Aunt Charlotte. Oh, come inside, Jack. Now, tell me, how are you getting along with your new job? Oh, solid, Aunt Charlotte. Gee, Mr. Pink is a swell guy to work for. Even if I am just an office boy, I'm going to learn plenty about real estate from him. Well, that's the best way to learn real estate from the ground up. <laughs> My goodness, but I wish I knew what to do about getting somebody to make that speech about the locators. Locators? What's that? Well, here. I've got a lot of the literature here, you know. They sent me. That explains it. It just came in the mail today. I see. The purpose of the locators is to keep a file of the addresses of servicemen's wives. Because of many wives moving from place to place to engage in war work, plus the uncertainty of overseas mail, returning veterans have frequently had difficulty in locating their families. That's true, you know. Mm -hmm. But a veteran has only to contact the locators to find where his wife is living. Now, isn't that a wonderful idea? Gee, yeah. And they sure need something like that here in Lakeview. That's exactly why I've got to find a good speaker to present it to the women's club. Hey, I know who could do it, Aunt Charlotte. Who? My boss, Mr. Pinker. Is he a good speaker? Is he? <laughs> Boy, you ought to hear him talk to a real estate prospect. Well, he can take some broken-down old vacant lot and make it sound like the uptown side of the Garden of Eden. Yes, I know the type. He's one of those men who make you wonder why they ever put the word real in real estate. <laughs> but he might be too busy. Well, there are lots of other men that can make a speech. Jack, anybody can make a speech. The trick is to make people listen. Hey, I know. How about Professor Katie? Oh, that's a good suggestion. I'll keep Professor Katie in mind. Now, let me see. I wonder who else I could get. Gosh, I don't know of anybody that'd be good. How about Mr. Anderson? Mr. Anderson? Oh, he's a newspaper man. He's no guy to talk to a woman's club. Well, being a newspaper man makes it all the better. Oh. Well, any woman who's ever been squeezed appreciates the power of the press. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go see Mr. Anderson the first thing tomorrow. <laughs> Interruptions, interruptions. How am I going to get this thing done? Anderson speaking. Didn't I tell you girls on the switchboard I didn't want to be interrupted? Now, look, I... He... Who? Oh, well, for Pete's sake, what are you waiting for? Send her in. <laughs> I'd better put on my necktie. <laughs> yes, yes. Come in, Charlotte. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Well, Charlotte, this is a pleasure. Have a chair. Here, wait till I take these papers off. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, my, what a nice office you have now. Uh -huh. You know, this is the first time that I've been to see you since they made you managing editor. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm really up among them now, Charlotte. Just goes to show if you keep plugging away, you come out on the top. Oh, don't be so self-conscious, Mr. Anderson. Uh-huh. Self-conscious about coming out on top? Who's going to notice a little bald spot? <laughs> You know, Charlotte, I never saw a woman who was so good at pretending to be dumb. Well, it's better to pretend to be dumb and get by than pretend to be bright and get found out. <laughs> but what I came in for, Mr. Anderson, how are you as a public speaker? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't make any claim to being an orator, Charlotte, but I can speak. Yes. <laughs> With all due modesty, I think I can say that I can sway people. I can transport them. In fact, I can even knock them off their feet. Now, wait. I want a speaker, not a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want a speaker, I'm your man, Charlotte. Now, uh, where do I do my stuff and when? Tomorrow at the women's club. Women's club? Mm-hmm. I want you to give, give a little talk about the locators. Oh, now, Charlotte, don't ask me to waste my valuable time talking to a handful of ladies about some obscure topic like that. But, Mr. Anderson, I don't think you know what the locators are. Oh, nonsense, Charlotte. I'm not a child. Besides, I haven't got time to prepare a speech. Look what I'm working on here. I'm writing a promotional campaign to build up the want ad section. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll have to try somewhere else. Thank you, and goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye, Charlotte. I I'd love to help you. Yes, I really would love to, but, uh, well, you know how it is. No, how is it? 
How's what? Love. <laughs> Professor Katie speaking. <laughs> I see. Yes, indeed. Kindly send Miss Greenwood in at once. <laughs> mm, you may enter. Well, good morning, Miss Greenwood. This is indeed an honor. Kindly be seated. Uh, thank you, Professor Katie. I hope I'm not interrupting your work. Oh, no, indeed. I'm preparing a lecture on the history of our community for the summer session classes but I definitely can spare you a moment. What can I do for you, Miss Greenwood? Well, I've heard that you're quite a speaker, Professor Cady. <laughs> uh, really, Miss Greenwood, I, I may have some oratorical accomplishments, but I don't want to call myself a Demosthenes. <laughs> well, nobody will notice. Go ahead. <laughs> I will. Demosthenes, Miss Greenwood, was the famous Athenian orator of ancient times. It is said that he developed his eloquence by filling his mouth with pebbles. Oh, yes. I've seen pictures of his sister. His sister? Gravel Gertie. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. I must investigate. But you were saying, Miss Greenwood, about my public speaking. Professor Cady, I'm looking for a good public speaker. Hmm? I see. The length of the talk doesn't matter. It ought to be like a woman's dress. A woman's dress. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to be interesting. <laughs> I see. This is rapidly becoming intriguing, Miss Greenwood. <laughs> Kindly continue. The talk is extremely important. I see. It's on a very timely subject. <laughs> it has to be given tomorrow. I see. Where? At the women's club. The women's club? Really? Yes, and it's about the locators. Locators? And why should I discuss locators? Well, perhaps you don't know what the locators are. Miss Greenwood, I assure you that my lingual announcements and accomplishments are second to none. But I have an important lecture to prepare on our community history. And I greatly fear that I have no time to spend speaking to a group of women. Oh, dear. Then you won't do it. My answer, Miss Greenwood, is definitely no. In that case, Professor Cady, I have only two things to say. And the first is? Goodbye. And the second? <laughs> I see. <laughs> Simon Speaker speaking. Why, well, I'm too busy. I can't see anyone now. I... I uh, who? Charlotte Greenwood. Well, send her in. Yes, yes, come in, please. Good morning, Mr. Tinker. Good morning, good morning. This is a great pleasure, Miss Greenwood. Thank you. Knew you were in Lakeview. Thought you'd be dropping in on me sooner or later. Now, what kind of a lot did you want? Me? A lot? Oh, uh, naturally, I'm in the real estate business, you know. You've undoubtedly seen my motto, lots and lots and lots and lots of lots. <laughs> I know you must have a lot in mind, Miss Greenwood. Yes, well, I may have had a lot in mind, but it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm still Miss Greenwood. This oh, yes. yes. Well, I came to see you, Mr. Pinker, because I heard you are quite a speaker. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I make no claim to perfection, Miss Greenwood. We all have our little faults. <laughs> but I might tell you that right now I'm working on an address which I've been asked to deliver before the realty board. And the board, you know, is an extremely critical audience. Yes, a board is bored before you begin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, then I know that you'll be glad to talk to the women's club tomorrow. Oh, yeah, uh, Women's club? Me? What about? The locators? Oh, no. No, I'm sorry, Miss Greenwood, but I have to make this important speech. I have to prepare it. I haven't time to talk to any women about locators. Well, perhaps you don't know what the locators are. Please, Miss Greenwood. I'm a very busy man. Oh, goodness. I've tried everywhere I know to find someone to talk to the women's club. I guess this will be the first time it's ever happened. What has happened? A bunch of women are going to be speechless. <laughs> wrote to our friends as often as we think of them, we could help make their everyday lives a lot happier. But letter writing doesn't come easy to everyone. Many of us find it difficult to put down what we feel on paper. Yet an appropriate card can speak for us. And it's easy to find a hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. 
Your Hallmark dealer has dozens of fine, unusual cards for every occasion. If someone's birthday is coming soon, pick out a warm, personal message or a card that says, Happy Birthday, with a clever, humorous verse. And how about that bride and groom and those friends whose anniversary is due? You'll want to remember them with a tasteful card, just as you'll want to congratulate those proud new parents across the way. And don't forget that friend in the hospital and how cheering your Get Well card can be. See your Hallmark dealer's selection of really distinctive cards tomorrow. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Now, back to our story. Charlotte has been trying to find a speaker to tell the Lakeview Women's Club about the locators the organization which helps returning veterans find their wives. Without success, she tried to secure the services of Judge Cronin, Mr. Anderson, Professor Cady, and the real estate man, Stuyvesant Tinker. Now it's the morning of the following day, the day in which the talk must be delivered, and the door is Good morning. Are you Miss Greenwood? Yes, I am. Is there something I can do for you? My name is Meredith, Miss Greenwood. Mrs. Meredith. And I've heard that you're connected with a locator. Oh, do you know about the locators? Yes. <gasps> You're just the person I want to see. Do come in. Thank you. Oh, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you, Mrs. Meredith. My goodness, it looked as if I were never going to find a speaker for the women's club. Speak? But I'm no speaker. Oh, but you said you knew about the locators. All I know, Miss Greenwood, is that I need their help. Need it badly. Oh, dear, I haven't even got it started. You mean... You mean there isn't any locators club in my school? Well, no, not yet. Oh, I'm sorry I troubled you then, Miss Greenwood. I'll, I'll have to be going. Well, now, wait. You said you needed help. In what way? Well, Miss Greenwood, I've been working in so many wars. I've been shifted from division to division, and I've had to move half a dozen times to half a dozen places. Even my mail takes weeks to catch up with me. My husband, Joe, he's in the Black Hawk division. Oh, you mean your husband, Joe, is just back from overseas? I didn't know he'd returned until I read it in the paper. They've come back to New York from Germany, and they've all been given 30 days first. But how is Joe going to find me, Miss Greenwood? But he doesn't know where I am. Well, have you written your husband and told him every new address? Yes, but I don't even know if he's got my letter. I didn't get any letter from him that he was on a furlough. I read it in the paper. It may take days for it to find me. He might not even find me at all. Well, now, here, here. Now, save those tears until you've got Joe in your arms. Miss Greenwood, if he can't find me... Oh, but he will, dear. I'm going to get the locator started, speaker or no speaker. You've got a collar in my eye. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Meredith. You go in the living room there and wait and don't fret now. Everything's going to be all right. Thank you, Miss Greenwood. Come. Coffee. Coffee. Oh, Mr. Anderson, what's wrong? Worked all night. I can hardly stand up. Must have coffee. <laughs> coffee. Mm. Why, you poor darling, come in. Oh, and I worn out all night long, all night long, writing that speech. Speech? What speech? The one you asked me to do about the locators. I changed my mind. Spent all night writing it, and it's, well... Oh, Mr. Anderson, <laughs> if I were only a maiden. <laughs> huh? A maiden? Yes, I'd say you're the answer to a maiden's prayer. <laughs> coffee! Coffee! <laughs> well, you've certainly got good grounds for it. <laughs> Dear, there's the door again. Uh, Mr. Anderson, go in the kitchen. You'll find a full silex on the stove. Thank you, Charlotte. Coffee! Coffee! Good to have coffee! Goodness, it sounds like he's chasing sandburns. <laughs> ah, good morning, good morning, Miss Greenwood. Oh, good morning, Mr. Pinker. Come in. Oh, I've got some great news for you, Miss Greenwood. Do you remember that speech you asked me to make about the locators? Don't tell me you wrote one. Yes, I did. Changed my mind. Put aside my other work and spent all night on it. Oh, Mr. Pinker, you worked all night. Yes. Oh, well, aren't you too tired to deliver your speech today? Now, if you'd like to forget all forget about, about it. it. After all the work I've put in? Miss Greenwood, do you think I'm mad? No, not yet, at least. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Pinker, would you like to uh, put it off until next week? Definitely not. I insist upon delivering it today. You know what happens to people who put everything off. Yes, they go in swimming. <laughs> but really, Mr. Pinker... Oh, oh, my, you have another caller. 
Shall I go in the living room? No, no, in the dining room, please. And do sit down and rest, Mr. Peter. I'm sure you must be very tired. Uh, well, don't fret about me. I'm seasoned timber. Uh, how fortunate. I'm only green wood. <laughs> Oh, good morning, good morning, Miss Greenwood. Oh, it's Professor Cady. Miss Greenwood, you may remember you asked me to make a speech about the locator. And you've changed your mind? Yes, indeed, Liz. I've been laboring most diligently throughout the night. And I am confident that the manuscript which I have here will send your women's club into frenzies of enthusiasm. Permit me to read a fragment. Oh, no, no, please, don't read it in the hall, please, Thank no. You. Then shall we repair to the living room? Well, the fact is, um, I have a guest in the living room. Huh? I see. Then perhaps the dining room? Well, I have a guest in the dining room, too. Huh? I see. Permit me to assure you, Miss Greenwood, that I am not a stickler for formality. How about the... the kitchen? <laughs> I also have a guest in the kitchen. <laughs> How charmingly eccentric. Uh, then shall I read my speech here? Yes, I shall regard it. I think you will agree that the ladies are going to give me a good reception. Yes, well, what kind of a reception am I going to get with three loud speakers? My, my speech starts thus, <clears throat> and I quote. The pioneers who originally selected this locality as the site of their first embryonic community. Just a second. Unquote. <laughs> Did you say, did you say that this speech is about the locators? Definitely, Miss Greenwood. The pioneers were called locators. Locators? Hey, what's going on out here? Oh, Miss Stuart Anderson, how extremely fortunate. Huh? You're just in time to hear my speech on the locators. Oh, the locators. Well, that's it. Locators. What is this? Look, now, please, now, don't get excited, gentlemen. I I... After I spent all night on my speech about the locators, listen to this. My good friend, when you want to locate anything, a good car, furniture, something you've lost, where do you instinctively turn? Oh, to the want ads of your local paper. Oh. And let me say, my dear friend, just a second, let me say, who, oh, oh, oh. may I inquire, is this uncouth individual? Oh, goodness, Mr. Pinker. Uh, what are these men mouthing about? Yes. I've written a speech on the locators. You do? What more? I have it right here. <clears throat> Neighbors, when you decide to locate here in Lakeview, to make your home amid all the natural, scenic beauty that surrounds this garden spot of the universe, oh, this is not a garden. your friendly real estate man is the one to whom you should tell. Oh, Mr. Pinker, you've done it too. Uh, huh? Oh, what? all of you. You wouldn't listen when I tried to tell you what the locators are. You wouldn't let me explain that it's an organization to help returning veterans find their wives. Now look what you've done. What hmm? we've done? Charlotte, look what you've done. You made me waste the whole night on this uh, <clears throat> masterpiece of a speech. I had to put aside the promotional piece I was supposed to write on the want ad section. Indeed, and I sacrificed the time I had planned to spend preparing my lecture on Lakeview's distinguished history. <laughs> well, who cares about history? I... I gave up the time I should have put into my speech for the realty board. Charlotte, why did you do this awful thing? You made all three of us look very silly. Now, just a minute. Now, don't blame me for the way you look. You... In the, first place, in the first place, you all refused to speak. Yes, but Charlotte. And in the second place, you all changed your minds without telling me. Yes, but Charlotte. And in the third place, none of you has wasted a minute in the first place. Yes, but Charlotte. Uh-huh. Those speeches you wrote for the locators without knowing what the locators are, you only wrote what you were personally interested in. Now, just read yours, Mr. Pinker. All right. When you decide to locate here in Lakeview... Oh, she's right. Well, there. That's perfect for the realty board. Well, you see, I... That is absolutely amazing. Mine is ideal for my history lecture. Well... Yeah, and what do you know? Mine is a perfect piece of promotion for the want ad section. Charlotte, I've got to hand it to you. You've got each of us to do a better job than if you'd let us alone. What do you mean, let you alone? I've been letting men alone ever since I can remember. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Greenwood. Should I wait any longer? Oh, I am so sorry, Mrs. Meredith. I'm afraid I'll have to be leaving, Miss Greenwood. I've got to get back to my job. Well, uh, Just a second now. I want you to meet these gentlemen. This is Mr. Anderson, managing editor of the Dispatch. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> Mr. Pinker? <laughs> Charmed. And Professor Cady. I am indeed delighted. Gentlemen, Mrs. Meredith came here to see if the locators could make sure that her husband finds her when he comes back from overseas. 
But now, of course, that the locators haven't been started now, yet. Now, wait a minute. Who says it hasn't stopped? You give me the facts on it, Charlotte, and it'll be on the front page of the next edition. I'll have your locators club going in 24 hours. Why, yes, we'll set up an information bureau at the at the railroad station. And I insist upon manning the booth personally to dispense the information. Yes, Mrs. Meredith, your husband is going to find you all right. Oh, mm-hmm. you're wonderful, all of you. Mm-hmm. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, uh, we kind of are, aren't we? <laughs> but, uh, Charlotte, um... Who's going to make the speech at the women's club? Well, boys, after all this fuss, I guess I'll have to do it myself. You? Oh, now, wait, Charlotte. What do you know about men who are trying to find their women folks? What do I know? I've been waiting for one to find me for 20 years. our star, Charlotte Greenwood. Charlotte, uh, have you seen the July issue of Coronet Magazine? Yes, Wendell, and I read the article on greeting cards. It was most interesting and most entertaining. I thought so, too, and I just wanted to recommend it as good reading to all our listeners. The article is titled, Sentiment for Sale, and it's an interesting and factual story of the greeting card industry. (laughs) Of course, Wendell, you and I are a little biased, because the article says nice things about Hallmark cards. Yes. Well, doesn't everybody? But anyway, it's in the current issue of Coronet, and it's good reading. Incidentally, uh, Charlotte, wasn't there something else you wanted to tell our audience? Yes, Wendell. Friends, the other day I found someone I know making an old-fashioned green apple pie. As I watched her, I thought, a green apple pie is like living a life. It takes both the sweet and the sour. Green apples are bitter to anyone's taste, and you wouldn't eat shortening nor flour. Yet mixed in with sugar and spices and baked by an expert who does the job right, the bitterness turns into tastes that are sweet, and the green apple pie is a delight. Now, sometimes a thing may seem bitter in life, but how foolish to keep it apart. Mix it in with the pleasanter things that you'll find if you'll search through the shelves of your heart. Bake it well in the warmth of a good, friendly smile. And you'll find when the task is complete that living a life is like green apple pie. What you thought of as bitter is sweet. by Thomas Freebaron Smith. Ransom Sherman and Arthur Q. Bryan appear today by special arrangement. In the regular cast with Miss Greenwood were John Brown, Charles Cantor, and Edward Ryan, who appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. The hallmark Charlotte Greenwood show came to you from Hollywood. Yeah, I think